Necromancy is surprisingly strong at Tuskal Zok. In this video, I'll tell you why while guiding you throughout the fight. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So one of the first things I wanted to try after getting myself tier 90 necromancy weapons was Tuskal Zuck. To see how effective the combat style is at a wave based boss with lots of trash to gobble up. So I went ahead and did 4 Zuck runs to get a feel for the combat style at Zuck as a sort of PVM warm up. As it turns out necromancy is quite good at clearing trash. A threads of fate into finger of death will make short work of groups of monsters stacked up. Alternatively, using threads of fate into the weapon special attack is also very effective. In between waves, as long as you don't have a target, you're able to summon all of your conjurers and juice them up with the exception of the zombie without spending any adrenaline. At wave 4, you encounter your first igneous enemy and I was confused at first. I was wondering like, does necromancy even have stunts? I don't remember it having stuns, and then I was like, oh, right. You can use the Soul Strike ability to stun your target, which in this case would allow you to deal maximum damage against the Igneous Golem. So for those of you doing Zuck runs of Necromancy, remember that the Soul Strike ability is the one you want to be using when trying to deal extra damage against the Igneous Golem, either at wave 4 or in the Zuck pizza phase. After wave 4, before going into the challenge wave at wave 5, you're going to need to press the extra action button and deal 50,000 damage to Zuck in a short time frame. This isn't very hard of necromancy at all due to the insane burst damage potential it has. As long as you've built to 100% adrenaline on Zuck or the minions and you probably have 12 necrosis stacks, use the living death ability and then just use finger of death as often as you can, as well as your weapon special attack after using finger of death twice, and you're done. Even in hard mode, I don't imagine it being all that difficult either, even though it's double the amount of damage at 100,000 damage. If you're having issues, you can even summon and juice up your minions before you click the extra action button to make Zuck attackable to make it even easier. Just make sure you don't have a target before, or it will cost you adrenaline. Now it's worth noting, I have a passive Ring of Vigor, so if you have a Ring of Vigor and you haven't completed the Extinction Quest to turn it into passive yet, you're going to want to equip that ring before using the Living Death ability. And remember that adrenaline potions are still a thing and very useful for these challenge waves. Now the challenge wave that follows at wave 5 is also very easy. You should still have Living Death active, to which you should just use the Threads of Fate incantation, so spell, and then Finger of Death, three of these golems to the graveyard instantly. And then just finish the other ones off. I'll be trying some hard mode Zuck at a later point in time as well, but I don't think this challenge will be all that difficult with Necromancy. You'll probably drop a Death Skulls ability with the regular Zuck cape on these golems and then Threads of Fate into Finger of Death. I'm personally not too worried about this, and I think the style is very effective for these challenges. My main concern would be taking more damage during the waves than with magic using Crypt Bloom and Anime Dead. But Necromancy has a spell that effectively allows you to reduce the total damage you take throughout the entire Zuck run by 20% as you gain a 20% chance to dodge damage by using the Darkness Incantation every 4 minutes. And if you're wondering, it can even dodge Jad attacks, so you can even save yourself if you miss a Prayer Flick if you're a bit lucky. Now the Necromancy Tank Armor set beyond tier 70 has a similar effect, but I would personally rock the Power Armor set for the chance to apply Death Mark to enemies, which will execute them if they drop below 20% life points, which is incredibly useful for Jad, Harakon, and even Tuskal Zuck at the end of the fight. On wave 9, you'll encounter Igneous enemies again, and this time it will be the Rangers, which you're going to need to hit with a threshold before you're able to deal full damage against them. Abilities like Bloat or the first cast of Spectral Scythe are perfect for this situation. Then, for the 50,000 damage part, you're going to do the exact same thing as you did before on Zark, get to 100% adrenaline, Living Death, then activate the extra action button, and then use Finger of Death plus the Weapon Special Attack to take him down to start the next challenge. You should still have Living Death active, and all you're going to need to do is use High Hitting Ability. So again, Finger of Death is going to be great here, or your Weapon Special Attack. In case you already have the Necromancy Zuck Cape, using the Death Skulls ability isn't a bad choice either. Then it was smooth sailing until Wave 14, to which we again encounter an Igneous Wave, except this time it's the easy ones, it's the Mages, to which you only have to go into melee distance, and then they drop their shield and you can take them out. For the part where you're going to need to damage Zuck for 50,000 life points in a short time frame, you're going to want to be a little bit more careful with your adrenaline. Build a 100% adrenaline and then use Living Death, don't click the extra action button yet, 
and then build to 100% adrenaline again, or close to it, by either attacking Zuck or killing the minions you might have left over. Then finally use the extra action button to make Zuck damageable, and start using Living Death and the Weapon Special Tank to take him down. Then try to build a 100% adrenaline or as close as you can as quickly as possible by using your two basics on your action bar or just letting the auto attack do its thing. And if you really need to, sip an adrenaline potion at this point as well. For the first attack that comes your way, use the Resonance ability and then use the Barricade ability, which is why you need 100% adrenaline. It is possible to build your adrenaline a little bit more by using the Preparation ability and some basics before that second hit comes in. Now, the way I'm activating defenses without swapping to a shield is because I have either the Lesser or Greater Bone Shield Incantation active. This allows you to use defenses without the shield or the need to swap to one. Be warned though that you do not need to click the incantation again for, well, ever until it runs out once activated. Clicking it again will deactivate it, to which point you need to reactivate it to use defensives again. After this challenge wave, you'll have to kill all three Jads, which isn't all too difficult with the necromancy skill, and then you're going to need to fight Harakon. As long as you're going into that fight with 100% adrenaline, I think it's actually quite easy to one-cycle Harakon with necromancy. There was not a single kill where I failed a one cycle. It was that easy to dish out big damage. And because I was using power armor, every time Harakon got to 20% life points, it would be killed by Deathmark or executed. Now you can do that manually by using the Deathmark spell as well. You can just do that with tank armor, but the power armor applying it automatically makes it so much easier. And the reason I say it's so easy is because all you do is you use Living Death, um, you might use a Ring of Vigor Switch if you don't have it as a passive, you sip your Adrenaline Potion, and then in between Touch of Death and the Soul Sap basic ability, you're just trying to spam Finger of Death and your Weapon Special Attack. In basic, that's all you really need to do to kill Harakon in one cycle, at least with 290 weapons. It, it just, it's wild how much easier this is than using Berserk with melee as you take more damage, or setting up an FSOA rotation, which requires a little bit more thinking and maybe even a ring swap. Now, of course, RNG might not be in your favor, and you may want to watch out for a couple of other things, but then you could potentially explode your zombie that you summoned beforehand, because you can summon it without losing adrenaline if you don't have a target. Or you could use the Volley of Souls ability at 3 souls. But it comes down to spamming the Finger of Death ability and using your weapon special attack. In hard mode, it might be a different story. And once you unlock your Zuck Cape, the Necromancy one, you might want to use the Death Skulls ability first at 100% adrenaline. Then use the Living Death ability because it also resets the cooldown of Death Skulls. Use Death Skulls again, drop a Finger of Death, drop another Finger of Death, and then use the weapon special attack. It's almost the same thing except you're adding in the Death Skulls ability in your rotation because it no longer uses 100% drilling and instead 60 or less depending on what gear you have unlocked. The Zuck fight follows the same principles. You want to build to Living Death and spam Finger of Death and the Weapon Special Attack. In case you have the Zuck Cape, you also want to incorporate the Death Skulls ability, but really that's what it comes down to. Now, I wouldn't call this a full guide, but I'm going to remind you anyway, don't forget to use Freedom on the Bleed and keep an eye on your Constitution level as your Constitution level will be drained by Zuck. Sip your Super Restores to keep your health high. As for the pizza phase you're going to be encountering those igneous monsters again remember that the igneous golem requires the soul strike ability to do full damage against the ranger requires you to use a threshold ability personally i like using the first version or first cast of the scythe ability which only costs 10 percent and then using whatever to finish it off and the mage requires you to get into close proximity and then the shield will drop so really the only weakness of necromancy during the pizza phase is that you only have one stun being soul strike for the Golem. If you have Revolution on set to two slots maximum with these two basic abilities, you'll never run into an issue where you don't have a soul to use. And remember, at 100,000 life points, Zuck will do three more attacks and then start off his entire attack rotation again, starting with the burn mechanic, which you're going to want to freedom. Overall, I'm very impressed with what Necromancy can do at Tuskal Zuck in normal mode. It has strong AoE and single target damage, perfect for the first two challenges. It also has access to shield abilities without needing to swap to a shield and a spell that causes 1 in 5 hits to miss. So despite wearing power armor, you still have a solid way of evading some of the damage. Necromancy is in fact so effective at Zuck that I would recommend getting your Igneous Stone with Necromancy over melee, obviously, ranged, 
and dare I say it, even magic. Now, you don't need to get your Igneous Stone with Necromancy specifically, as you can use any stall to get that stone, but Necromancy sure is a solid option. The single target damage alone is enough to make up for the ease of having reduced damage with magic tank armor combined with the anime dead spell. The faster Zuck and Arak can die, the less damage you take, and sometimes the best defense is having good offense. If it's the best style for hard mode though, I'm not sure, but that's something I'm definitely going to try. For now though, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.